So Roddock four to five, Harding. Bindery goes the other way. What's up, boys? Pretty steady. It's a fascinating contest. Roddock likes to uh, come as late as possible. I thought that he wanted blinkers on after watching him run at Sandown last time for a fascinating shallow hurdle. Let's get the experience of Graham. And they've all taken the first safely, and the leader, Bindery, a 5-2 to two chance, one of the off from 11-4. to four. Roddock sits last, just a bit uh, jinky in the parade here in front of the stands. Certainly on his toes and uh, quite hot. Ten flights of hurdles to jump. They're coming to the second now. Bindery to Greg, what's up, boys? And then Patty Roy, written up at 16-1 to one on the inside of the check colours of Barney Nose. And he's tenth in the width of his bumper here. And Roddock is sitting five and five early on using this two mile five trip as the race in his portfolio but anticipation is that uh, he'll come back to all the distances for his subsequent races but we'll see so Bindery leading Carla Willen on the 45 winner mark for the season shows the way to what's up boys Richard Johnson already on the score sheet here and then Hattie Roy in the colours of Mrs Anne Humphreys Successful three times this year with Dictum and uh, two out of two with Hattie Roy, so a good year for her. Cheltenham box holder, check colours of Barney Nose and the green and maroon bathroom jacket on Roddock. So they jump three and they're well through the first three quarters of a mile now, nearly. As Carla Wellen looks around to see where the rest are, and it's Bindery who leads. Locally trained, Bindery. Two Watts of boys in second and Hattie Roy in third, and then Barney Nose, the back marker is Roddock. Game performer the there, Hattie Roy. Irish point to point winner. Bindery leading then, coming down towards flight number four. It'll be ten next time. Bindery has the edge, comes to it, and with ears going into the final hurdles, leads. Shows a four lead over What's Up Boys, who's three in front of Patty Roy, who's uh, neck in front of Barney Nose. And Roddock is five of five. So they swing away from the stands. And Bindery. And gents, this is just a sensible pace set by Carl Llewellyn. Well, I think he's gone plenty quick enough. Just had a little breather at the top of the hill going away from the stands and now just running uh, down to the first flight on the far side. And he'll want to keep this horse on a nice even keel, Bindery, keep him jumping and uh, make sure that he goes quick enough that the others don't get him at him at it at any stage. But at the point at this point, they're all travelling quite well enough. Possibly Hattie Roy just a little bit outpaced, and uh, Roddick made a slight error at the previous slider hurdle. He jumped that one satisfactorily enough. Hattie Roy, five of five, and Roddick getting a bit closer. The grey, what's up, boys? Barley knows no slouch at all as they take the next, and again, Roddick a little bit uh, awkward at that slider hurdle, wasn't he? Not as fluent as some of the others. It's all a little bit too much for Hattie Roy. The writing's on the wall of that one will be placed five at best. So it's Bindery that leads to Barney Nose. Very much as a neglected horse in the race. Second at Sandown last time. And uh, what's up, boys? Roddock's on the outside. And again, not a natural, is he? Doesn't look at all natural, those hurdles. And Hattie Roy is finding it all too much. Still, Bindery has the edge. Two in second place, Barney knows, and Roddock's coming back for more, and Tony McCoy pulls the goggles down, and this horse with a lot of natural speed, but certainly not a natural jumper for me, uh, goes to the top of the hill. But on this track here, the new track at Cheltenham, they've only got two flights of hurdles to jump in the last three quarters of a mile, but on the left, he's being pushed along, Bindery, and between the pair, Chris Bonner on Barney knows, going well, Bindery, Barney knows, Roddock the outside, and uh, Tony McCoy is certainly going to work on him with this trip to mile five. Looks as if What's Up Boys is being pulled up. So they come down towards the second last. Bindery, Barney Nose and Roddock under pressure now. Hattie Roy jumped it safely in four. They've got one more flight of hurdles to take, but a mighty run before they get to it. And the writing's on the wall that Roddock, it's difficult to see him winning despite McCoy's urgings. Coming back a little bit, possibly, Bindery, on the final turn, has a three lead over Barney Nose, and Bindery, 
who's going for his fourth straight win. Uh, this Roselier, but Barney knows he's moving up on the inside. The in the wings horse as they come down towards the final fly to hurdles. And it's Bindery, Irish bred to Barney knows in second place. Back in third is Roddick, and it looks as if Tony's accepted the situation. Hattie Roy might get third. Come down towards the final flight of hurdles. And Bindery, pillar to post if he pings, and he does. To Barney knows in second place. Hattie Roy comes to pass Roddick on the run uphill to the line. And so Bindery strides away with a cello hurdle. A fine bit of front running to give Carl Llewellyn his 46th win of the season. And at the line, Bindery is a straight four from four. An honest performance by Marnie knows he deserves a big race. And well done to Hattie Roy finishing third, taking the scalp of Roddick, who's fourth of four, and will surely be coming back to shorter distances in the future. The cello hurdle then has been won by number two. Bindery in the colours of Mr. J. Moore, trained locally here by Nigel Tristan Davis and ridden by Carl Lewis. Up coming in the straight, but Bindery makes all the running to win. The well backed 5 to 2, clear second favourite. Beats Barney Nose, who ran a blinder at 16 to 1, with Hattie Roy third, also returned at 16 to 1. Roddock was fourth.